bad winter. There's a couple good chuck stories just in that bad winter. <laughs> and he'd, uh, you know, like he'd been on this mountain and, and, and almost died and his friend got horribly frostbitten. His climbing partner got horribly frostbitten on this and, and he'd, he got arrested with 25 hits of blotter acid <laughs> and he'd been um, diagnosed with pancreatitis and diabetes because he drank a lot. But he shows up at the race anyway and he's got like, he wasn't very tall, he had a day pack on and he had war paint like here <laughs> and, and his dreads and his racing skis and inside his pack. All he really had, he had inside his pack. Oh, he had. Before, didn't wasn't he high on? LSD? No. They weren't gonna let him start. That was the next year. <laughs> 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 okay. And so he shows up and he's got this day pack and it's got a a kite. You know, like a parapont. You know those things. A what? Parapont. You know, like a paraglider. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's what's in his. That's what's in his pack, what? and these racing skis, you know, like Nordic racing skis, and a foam pad, and a sterno stove. Ice axe. Oh, and an ice axe. And, and that's about it. And his plan, we're all going to go around the mountain. So, like, you know, here's Devil's Mountain Lodge, and Andy walks around the mountains like this to McCarthy. That's the way we're all going to race. And Chuck's going to go, like, right up and over the mountains, up to 11,000 feet, and then jump off this ice fall. <laughs> Not just this ice fall. This ice fall is the... It's huge. I think it's the tallest ice fall in Alaska. It's 6,000 feet tall. Vertical. You know, like, we can't see. There's no mountains around here oh, okay. have, this have this much vertical height. And it's all ice. It's like, imagine like this. Well, you've seen the Kumbu ice fall on, on Everest, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so imagine that. It's an ice fall. You, there's, like, you can't go through it. You can't, you can't get in it or walk up or down it, you know, because it's, it's so dangerous. And, uh, so Chuck... And he's by himself. He's gonna ski up the Nebesna Glacier, which is huge, like <laughs> 40 miles or something. And he's gonna ski up by himself to the top of the ice fall, and he's gonna jump. And and he's, gonna, he's guaranteed to win if he can pull it off. Pretty much, <laughs> you'd think. So, <laughs> so Chuck gets up to the top, and the weather's bad, it's storming. You know how the weather is around here. And he gets up there, and it's storming, and he can't fly, so he, he takes out his foam pad and he sits down on his foam pad and he gets out his sterno stove and his cook pot and he brews up a cup of tea and wraps himself up in his kite and spends the night at 11,000 feet on this glacier. And then in the morning, the weather's kind of crappy. He can't fly. In the afternoon, there's a little break. He gets up on the edge of a serac and he launches off and flies down, but he doesn't get a very good flight and he lands on a serac like 1,000 feet down, 1,000 vertical feet. You know, that's like... You know what we hiked up the first day? A serac is a part, like a like a uh, big piece of the ice fall. Yeah, right. like a big chunk of ice. Piece yeah. of ice. And so he gets there and the weather's bad, he can't fly. He pulls out his foam pad, sets down, gets out his sterno stove. You know a sterno stove, that's for making fondue, you know? It's like mine, it's like, like imagine this. Yeah. And like some a small flame coming out. Yeah. yeah. And he wraps up in his kite and spends an, another night up there. The next day, Weather's crappy. There's Is the a race break. over by now? Well, not yet. <laughs> and he uh, he flies off again. And this time, he's flying down. It's kind of turbulent. And he has to land on a serac. And he's got his ice axe stuck under his shoulder strap right here. And the serac is like this tower of ice. And he's going to land on it. And he just barely lands on it. And as he lands on it, his kite starts pulling him off. And he takes his ice axe and he stabs it in to keep from getting yanked off the serac. Can't fly the rest of the day. Gets out his foam pad. Gets out his sterno stove, pulls out the cook pot, brews up, wraps up in his kite, and spends the night. Third day, beautiful sunshiny weather. Launches off of this little pinnacle of ice, flies all the way down the stairway ice fall, lands on the root glacier, walks into town, and he's in last place. <laughs> <laughs> but you go to McCarthy today, and you you know you, you say, hey, do you ever hear this guy named Chuck Comstock? And they're like, oh yeah, he's that guy who flew off the stairway ice fall and won that that race they had, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but he came back the next year. And Dick Griffith, the guy who, you know, I told you about with the pack with the pack raft, the old right, man, right. Nate, you know, old age and treachery. And and Chuck was hitchhiking to the start of the race and Dick picked him up and put him in the back 
and uh, put him in the back of the truck. And when he let him out, Chuck Het was inside of like a plastic garbage bag, <laughs> smoking some kind of white powder. That's what they said. <laughs> and so they weren't going to let him race. And, and Chuck was like, well, fuck you. I'm going to race anyway. And so he took off and he skied up the Nebesna Glacier and he got up to the stairway ice fall to the top and the weather was bad again. So this time he gets out his foam pad and his sterno stove and his cook pot, wraps up in his kite and spends five nights up there. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad, bad, bad weather, stormy. And finally the weather breaks and his kite's all crusted up, you know, with snow. And he thinks, well, you know what I need to do? I just need a good run down a hill on my skis and I'll launch off. So he gets on his skis and he skis down the slope and tries to launch, but it doesn't launch. It's just a wad of ice and he crashes into a crevasse and breaks, you know, his, ski, his skis and his poles. And somehow he's able to climb out and he climbs out of the crevasse. And this time he's a little uh, less reckless and he decides that he's just going to dry out his kite. So he stakes out these broken pieces of his skis and ski poles and spreads the kite out. And he was kind of an impatient guy, so I'm surprised he's able to do this. Spread it out in the sun and let it dry. And when it <coughs> was finally dry, <coughs> he went up right up to the edge of the ice fall and launched off one flight all the way down, down to the bottom. And of course, dead last again. <laughs> <laughs> so someone needs to redeem this thing and do it and win. Using no. his I don't know if anybody's got the. No one's no <laughs> one's cowboy enough for for that route. <laughs> Just Chuck. <laughs> yeah, Chuck was nuts, man. Well, I think the best part is when uh, when I think you you'd gone out for like a training run or training like a test run on the route, and Chuck called your house and Peggy answered. Yeah. And and. You know, Peggy says, "Well, Roman, you know, Roman's out doing like a, doing one of the sections. He wa he wants to win this year." Yeah, I went out. I was doing a bike. <laughs> I was riding my bike across it to do. I that was when we rode in the Besna McCarthy on our mountain bikes for the first time. And uh, and and Peggy said, "Roman's he's planning to win this year. He's trying. He's he's hoping to win." He, and Chuck's like, "Well, I am too." And then hung up. <laughs> 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 I am too. This yeah. guy, man, larger than life, mythical, like, and I don't like, and not because I think you elaborate on your stories. No, he. Like, this is for real. Yeah, I know. No, I don't. No, I don't I, embellish. I, I probably yeah, right. leave the good parts out that I don't even know about. Right. 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 <laughs> well, I mean, you have to wonder what he went through. Five days sitting on top of the stairway ice fall, like. <laughs> Like, you know, you just kind of, like, say, like, oh, you know, it was stormy five days. Yeah. Bullshit stormy five days. Can you imagine what it would have been like? Like, I've, I've had to wait 24 hours in rainstorms <laughs> and, and, like, and shit storm like, in snowstorms in the eastern Alaska, and I was about to lose it. Yeah, and like, you, like, had a sat phone. Yeah. And this is Chuck up on a glacier. The fucking, and I was in a cabin, and he, yeah. had, a, he had a sterno stove and a nylon, a nylon... Ice. A kite. Piece of a kite. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. <laughs> kite is his, is his shelter. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. Yeah, he it's was... a miracle he didn't freeze to death up there. I know. He died in All that sleep. ice, you know? I know. I, he was tough. He was brutally tough. He was the toughest guy I ever knew. Well, he probably had enough drugs and hooch in him to not feel what was going to kill him. Maybe. Maybe.